Hi guys, my name is Akil Babu and I'm going to talk to you about the Tremor Reducing Smart Glove or as I like to call it, the TRS Glove. So basically as a part of my honours project this year, I was tasked with developing a smart wearable glove that can mitigate or stabilise the hand in the case of tremors, especially tremors that come from diseases like Parkinson's or essential tremors. This ultimately meant that there were two parts to the project one being able to identify when a tremor occurs and the second being able to mitigate the tremor once it was found. Patients diagnosed with diseases that cause tremors tend to find that their quality of life can be drastically impacted. Even the simple task of holding a glass of water can prove a challenge for people with tremors. There are several types of tremors that can affect an individual's control, such as postural, kinetic, or resting tremors commonly seen in Parkinson's patients. However, Parkinsonian tremors tend to have a frequency between 2.5 to 6.8 Hz, and it's this metric that will allow us to identify them later on. The current option for treating Parkinson's are either invasive, such as deep brain stimulation surgery, or other non-invasive options that tend to fall short in terms of either form factor, effectiveness, or even just adjusting to the daily nuances of life. Now where the TRS glove has the potential to outshine the other solutions comes in the fact that we use nitinol. Essentially nitinol is a metal that falls under a category of metals called shape memory alloys. It has a pre-programmed shape and after you physically deform it and then proceed to heat it up, it can revert back to its original pre-programmed shape. Now we can use this mechanic to our advantage by engaging the nitinol, which in turn provides a resistive force to the person wearing the glove and ultimately provides them with a form of stability, just as a resistance glove would work. However, the difference in the TRS glove is that it's semi-active, meaning it's only on when a tremor occurs. The experimental setup had two aims in mind. One was to simulate a tremor in a single plane by converting rotational motion to oscillatory motion. And the second was to track that oscillatory motion by retrieving the Euler angles using a normal IMU. We input the frequency of the oscillation by using a brushless motor controller. And after reading the IMU data over a second with an interval of 0.05 seconds, we could then chuck that data through a Fourier transform and look at what the prevalent frequency is. If that prevalent frequency matches the input frequency we put in for the motor, we can confidently assume that we are able to identify tremors in a single plane. And fortunately, we found that that indeed was the case, as could be seen by the video. Now, unlike the ideal experimental setup, a lot of noise can occur from IMU data when it's especially on the hand. So in order to overcome this, a holistic and comprehensive post-processing scheme had to be put into place. And for that, we decided to use neural networks. Just like the experimental setup, the raw IMU data is put in through a FFT algorithm in order to get it into the frequency domain. However, instead of just looking for the prevalent frequency, we take all amplitudes for all frequencies into account and we input that into a multi-layer perceptron neural network or MLP network. By doing this, we are able to train the network and allow it to do its own feature extraction by looking at all the frequencies and being able to get a more holistic look at whether a tremor is occurring or not as opposed to just looking at the prevalent frequency. The next phase, which is making the glove, will be extended over to the summer period due to COVID reasons, where the prototype design will have a double insulated glove, it will have the nitinol wire embedded within the two layers, and it will have an IMU to read the Euler angles, it will have a Raspberry Pi in order to run the FFT algorithm and the pre-trained MLP network. It will have an Arduino Nano to control a MOSFET, which in turn will control the heating rate of the night null. And it will also have a LiPo battery in order to power that ohmic heating. 
all in all, thank you for listening to my project and I hope you have a wonderful day. Namihi.